Welcome to the PhoneArena.com video review of the Sanyo Katana Eclipse. The Katana Eclipse replaces the DLX at the top of Sanyo's lineup. It's a mid-range EVDO clamshell featuring a 1.3 megapixel camera, a speakerphone, and it has a 96 by 96 one inch display on the outside. You have mechanical MP3 controls down here. Along the sides of the phone you have LED light strips. This is one of the selling points of the phone is that you have 43 different illumination patterns which you can set from pretty much anything. That means incoming callers, incoming text messages, unique caller and text IDs, key presses, and just about anything you can think of you can set patterns for. On the left side of the phone is a covered micro USB charging and data port. We do like that Sanyo is adopting to this relatively early and we've seen that since the S1 almost a year ago. We've got a volume rocker and a camera key also on that side. On the right here we have 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. We prefer to see a 3.5 millimeter especially with the multimedia keys on the outside. Last but not least is the micro SD card slot. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate the illumination feature here on the phone by making a quick test call to it. As we mentioned, there are 43 different patterns available. This is one of the flashier ones, and as you can see, all the different colors are flashing through. The user can definitely go with a more laid back one, or even turn it off at all. We can see this playing well with teens and the younger crowd. However, the general user base would think that this is way too young of a feature for them. If we flip the phone open here, we'll see a relatively small 2 inch 176 by 220 pixel display. There's a ton of real estate around this display, making it look even smaller than it is. On top of that, Sanyo is downgraded from the DLX, which had a QVGA 262,000 color display. The 65,000 colors of this display just simply doesn't measure up. The keypad is relatively standard for Sanyo. It uses hard plastic keys. However, as you can see, the talk, speaker, and end button are integrated with the dial pad as opposed to with the directional and navigational cluster up here. A lot of times we found ourselves meaning to press the end button and accidentally pressing back. It's a little disorienting, but nothing that you can't get used to. The phone itself doesn't really offer anything all that special. It's a basic mid-range phone, and the only real difference from this and the DLX is the outside controls and the illumination strips. We don't like the design of this one nearly as much as we did the DLX, which was less in your face and more of a refined look. It has a good size in the hands, however the materials they used are relatively cheap and it just doesn't feel like it's a quality phone. It does have that familiar Sanyo click, something we don't personally like but we know a lot of people do love. The phone performed admirably as a phone. We had no issues with it, and it gave us almost five hours of talk time. In the end, it comes down to the performance, and the Katana Eclipse did perform very well. However, they're charging $99 for this phone, which goes up against phones like the Razer 2, as well as the HTC Touch and Palm Centro, and the BlackBerry Curve. In our opinion, it's really just not worth the money, unless you're a Sanyo diehard and want their latest and greatest.